Hey there, it's Brie, and these are my favorite reads from May. I apologize if in the background you can hear random noises because they're building a house not too far from me, and it's very loud, but hopefully it's not distracting. All right, so I have five favorite books that I read in the month of May, and they're really, really good ones. A couple of them are all-time favorites. One is like a genre favorite, so I'm very excited to share them with you. The first one is Carnal Urges by J.T. Geisinger. For the Mafia Romance Readathon, I picked up this book because it's the second book in her Queens and Monsters series. I liked the first book, but this book by far is my favorite so far in the series. I love it. I love it because it's one of those like reluctant heroes who reluctantly falls for the heroine. He ends up kidnapping her. And <laughs> it's one of those situations, it's like a grumpy sunshine, but he is from a rival mafia gang, I believe, from the hero in the first one, and he's kind of doing this in retaliation. So you also have that element of this could never happen between them because she's best friends with the heroine from the first book, and you really feel like there's no way that they can be together. He's also a grumpy hero with a heart, a villain hero with a heart. It's captor captive, like I said, but I think my absolute favorite part was the heroine. I'm such a sucker for heroes that have that like kind of devil may care attitude, the very easygoing, carefree, they're in like dangerous or precarious situations, but they just act like they don't really care. <laughs> and they're just very like um, charming. I love heroes that are like that, but oh my gosh, this heroine was the one who was like that. And I loved it, especially since she was the one who was being kidnapped. I just love how charming she was, how she didn't care about anything. She kept her cool the whole time and it drove the hero crazy. And she was just making everybody fall in love with her. And I thought it was so much fun to read about about. I loved that dynamic between them because he could read it on her from the very beginning and like his men just kept falling for her. She kept just like twisting them around her little pinky in this very like blase kind of attitude and I just loved it so much. It was so much fun to read. It was so so good. I cannot wait to read more in the series. I had every intention of marathoning that series but I also didn't want to spend any extra money so as I was reading it I wanted to read books that I already owned and I did end up like purchasing that one but for the rest of the readathon I didn't want to have to like spend money on books I wanted to try and find mafia romances that were on any of the services I already pay for or that I already owned but unfortunately this one was not so I didn't want to go and spend money on the rest of the series which is why I haven't moved on in the series but I am planning on moving on in the series actually Paige from paperbacks and lattes actually gifted me the next book in the series. She says it's her favorite, so I'm very excited about that. And then this next book was not just a favorite of May, but this is an all-time favorite book. It's an all-time favorite book from this author, and it's just like going to become a comfort read. I just know it. It is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I happened to pick this book for Book of the Month, and I saw that, I think it, I got this from Libby or Hoopla, maybe Scribd, I can't remember, but one of the audio audiobook services that I pay for or that I get for free from my library had this book on audio, so I downloaded it and I listened to it knowing, hoping that I liked this. And I have physical copies of Abby Jimenez's other books, so I went ahead and got this one, but oh my gosh, this one is my all-time favorite. Abby Jimenez can be hit or miss for me. I have, I've enjoyed, honestly, I've enjoyed every book that I've read by Abby Jimenez. However, I haven't like, loved any. This one I loved. I loved it with all of my heart and soul and that was very surprising because it is a closed door romance but there the chemistry between the two characters was so strong and so moving like their romance was absolutely moving. It killed me you know the conflict and it killed me but it was absolutely understandable. So the hero and heroine come from two totally different wor worlds. The heroine comes from a very like elite family of surgeons and she's a surgeon herself. She has very high expectations on her from her family and then the hero comes from a small town and it's a town where like everybody knows everybody else and he's just the sweetest kindest soul and how they end up together and interacting together is just absolutely adorable it felt so natural and it just felt their, their romance felt like it progressed naturally there was a lot of bumps in the road in their romance and I feel like for some people that may be it may be annoying to them but for me I loved it. It felt very natural. It felt understandable, the things that were like hindering them just because they were part of two totally different worlds. And even though they had this amazing chemistry, sometimes it takes more than just chemistry and more than just love 
to make a romance work, you have to actually work for it. So it makes you work for it in this one. This one brought me to tears a couple of times and it was due to the romance, not due to like any kind of outside sad thing, which is surprising because that very rarely happens to me, but I absolutely loved this book. I cannot stop singing its praises. Another book that I cannot stop singing its praises and is a genre favorite for me is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. This is my all time favorite historical romance and that is coming from somebody who doesn't typically love historical romances. I like a lot of historical romances. I enjoy them when I read them. I do have to read them in smaller doses though. I usually wait for the historical romance readathon to really read very many of them and that's because I get burnt out on them very easily but I tend to prefer contemporary romances and I think that's why Alexis Hall's romances work for me because they read they're easy to read and they feel contemporary and I think that might be the complaint for people who don't like this. It's probably from people who typically love historical romances and you know, are, are expecting a certain way of writing, and that's not how Alexis Hall writes, but I love Alexis Hall's writing. It's so charming, it sucks you in, and it's so freaking funny. And this book, I think of all his books that I've read so far anyway, pulled at my heartstrings the most, and I felt like it was gonna break me at any moment. But what was great is that even though it's dealing with some heavy, heavy topics in it, and things that could ultimately really, really hurt, he balances it out with humor, in such a in such a believable way like it doesn't feel like either the humor or the emotional parts take away from each other but oh my gosh this book was so freaking good this is a childhood friends to lovers romance in a very unique way the hero in this one is disabled he's dealing with chronic pain he's a war veteran the heroine in this also is a war veteran as well they were friends as children the heroine is also trans in this and the hero doesn't know that the heroine is trans. So it's one of those books that has a big secret in it. And normally that can be very unsettling to read about. And it was, I mean, like you definitely are unsettled, especially as they start to fall for each other and the hero doesn't realize who the heroine is. Something, it was done in such a way that you were, you understood why the heroine was keeping the secret because of the time that they were in and because of how things kind of play out. And you understand the hero's reaction when he does eventually find out we all know he's eventually going to find out. But oh my gosh, this book was so good. It's so charming. It's everything that I love about Alexis Hall times a million. Another book that was a favorite this month was Crimes of Passion by Jack Harbin. This book was so much fun. It's an audible original. It's a full cast narration, full sound effects, everything. Everything that I love about audiobooks, everything that I wish every romance audiobook had, honestly, was in this book. And it was written by Jack Harbin. You guys know I love Jack. And of course, Jack Harbin did it again. He is such a chameleon. He's able to write so many different genres and somehow I don't know, just make me fall in love with them even though it doesn't feel like the same author. It feels like someone else wrote each of the books that I've read so far by Jack. And this book especially I loved because it had such a fun romance, but the topic of it I think was my favorite part because it's a true crime, it's a romance between two, two true crime podcasters and they're kind of rival podcasters, but they end up having to work together. So there's like forced togetherness in it. The banter was really good. I mean, there were some one-liners in there that I was cracking up at. And thankfully, Jack Harbin was the one who reached out to me and asked me if he could gift me the audiobook so that I could read it and review it. And I was like, I happily will. Jack is one of the few authors that I will do that for because I feel I don't like having a lot of pressure to read ARCs, but there are certain authors who A, I want to support and B, I just know that I'll enjoy their works. Like there's nothing more awkward <laughs> than accepting an ARC from somebody and then not liking it because I'm not going to lie and say that I do. But oh my gosh, this one was so much fun. I've seen a lot of people read it and loving it lately and I feel like especially if you like true crime and you like true crime podcasts then you'll especially appreciate this one and then last but certainly not least is Lotus by Jennifer Hartman this is a book that I read because I had a viewer comment on one of my videos and say they compared this book to Archer's voice and honestly that's all it took also I'm hopefully going to do a video recommending all of my favorite virgin hero romances and this one has a virgin hero and oh my gosh it's so so good so if you're familiar with Jennifer Hartman she wrote Still Beating, which is another book that I read by her, and that one is extremely emotional, very triggering. This one is as well. It's very emotional. It deals with kidnapping of a child. It deals with childhood SA. It deals with a lot of heavy topics, and there's like violence and murder and all sorts of stuff, a lot of heavy stuff. This one actually felt... 
the writing, and I guess maybe it was the heroine, it felt a little bit lighter than Still Beating. I think because the heroine is a little bit quirky and I adored her. This is a childhood friends to lovers romance as well. The hero was kidnapped when he was a child. He was kept for 22 years, like in this underground bunker, 22 years, ever since he was a child. And he was best friends with this girl who lived next door and she has not gotten over the fact that he was kidnapped and has kind of been holding it very close to her chest for a very, very long time and has been looking for him ever since. And then he comes back. And it's how they work out, you know, how they feel about each other because she is someone who kind of kept him going all those years in captivity. He always thought about her and she was always on his mind. And now he's kind of trying to reconcile you know, the person she was before with who she is now and her vice versa with them. And then him kind of being reintroduced into the world. And it's just so, so good. So moving. I loved this book so very much. It was such a great recommendation. All right, guys, that's it. Those were all my favorite books in the month of May. Let me know down below what your favorite books were that you read in May. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy reading.